guys today i want to tell you about the forest projects forests might be the best tool humanity has to tackle climate change trees give cooling shade absorb and store carbon dioxide recycle water and provide habitat for other plants and animals Huge international projects like the Trillium Trees Initiative believe planting forests will ultimately help to rebalance Earth's climate. Plants naturally absorb CO2 and emit oxygen as part of photosynthesis, but trees can process a lot more because of the size of their trunks, green leafy canopy, and root structures. This filtering and storage capacity is part of the United, United Nations uh, Great Green Wall. Initiative to plan an 8,000 kilometers long tree belt across the African continent. More recent projects like Trillion Trees, uh, the World Economic Forums, uh, 1D and the UN's follow-up Great Green Wall for Cities highlight tree planting and forest regeneration as the most effective nature-based solution for runaway CO2 emissions. 1D uses research data showing that planting nearly 1 billion hectares uh, 2.2 billion acres of trees in the right places could remove 25% of the CO2 from Earth's atmosphere. Meanwhile, <clears throat> the Great Green Wall for cities, for cities project would create urban green areas linked to wider forest restoration across both Africa and Asia. Once complete, the wall will capture an estimated uh, 0.5 to 5 billion metric tons of CO2 every year. And if well managed, its urban forests could also reduce air temperature, lower flood risk and improve air quality by filtering out pollutants. City trees are actually sucking more CO2 out of the atmosphere than was thought. Climate scientists know that forests soak up more than they release, absorbing 30% of carbon emission from fossil fuels. Now, Boston University studies show that outlying forest edges and urban trees grow almost twice as quickly and store carbon faster than trees deep inside the forest. Projects influenced by Japanese botanist Akira Miyawaki are now creating tiny community forests across the planet, using native trees to provide shade, support plants and animals and store carbon in city centers. Moyavaki's microforests are much denser than conventional plantations. They store 30 times more than CO2 than monoculture, single species, forests and offer 30 times better noise and dust reduction than his followers. Uh, Dave Novak is a researcher at the U.S. Forest Service who has studied using trees in urban settings to sequester carbon for more than 30 years. Trees not only cool their surroundings and filter out CO2, they also recycle tiny particular matter, PM, pollutants. Conifer trees such as yew, pine, or caprice trees uh, reduce PM best because they are average, 
ever, evergreen, says Novak. But beyond trees that grow quickly, figuring out which exact species work best to improve air quickly depends on many factors, including soil, local climate and uh, site, co site conditions. <clears throat> Generally, three uh, species uh, that live long and require little maintenance are top of the list, says Novak. Still, in the identifying the right species to plant requires local expertise. Uh, says Novak. Urban planners can start by using the U.S. Forest Service I3 tools to choose the best trees for each locality. Another tool, American Forests Tree Equality Score Analyzer, helps planners to target urban forests in disadvantaged areas. The world is making up to the importance of mangroves. Mangroves are treated by sea level rise, lack of sediment and human activity. So why should we care? Uh, they are found around both tropical and uh, subtropical shorelines, everywhere from Miami to Indonesia and they have a lot of benefits for both the planet and people. In 2010 several mangrove species were in danger of going extinct prim primarily due to coastal development, logging and agriculture and climate change. Uh, following a study by the Global Marine Species Assignment Unit, uh, 11 mangrove species were planted, placed on the International Union for Conservation of Nature Red List of Treated Species. The potential loss of these species is a symptom of widespread destruction and exploit of mangrove forests by Spoliero. A research associated with, G with the GMSA at Old Dominion University and principal author of the study. Uh, according to the American Museum of Natural History, uh, less than 50% of the world's mangrove forests remained intact at the end of the 20th century, and half of those were in poor condition. The museum calling mangrove forests among the most threatened habitats in the world and call it loses rampant across the globe. Mangroves form one of the most important tropical habitats that support many species and their loss can affect marine and terrestrial biodiversity much more widely. Polidoro added. All mangrove trees grow in areas with low oxygen soil where slow-moving waters allow sediment to accumulate. They can be extremely beneficial for communities that live in low-lying areas, such as Miami, as they stabilize the coastline and reduce erosion from storm surges, currents, waves and tides. Miami's mangrove forests have even been described as keeping the city afloat. City officials have begun monitoring the mangroves 
after realizing what an important role they play in acting as barriers against hurricanes and form a stable coastline that shields against erosion and helps act as a natural sea wall for tide spills. In 2010, uh, several mangrove species were in danger of going extinct, primarily due to coastal development, logging and agriculture, and climate change. Following a study by the Global Marine Species Resettlement Unit, uh, 11 mangrove species were placed on the International Union for Conservation of Nature Red List of Treated Species. The potential loss of these species is a symptom of the widespread destruction and exploitation of mangrove forests. As Polidor Research Associate of the GMSA at uh, Old Dominion University and principal author of the study said at the time. The intricate system of mangroves, their roots and highly complex also makes these forests attractive to fish and other organisms bringing other, other species into the area. Everything from one inch long moby to 10 foot long sharks. They thrive in areas that other trees simply couldn't tolerate because they can handle high levels of salt. They excrete it through their way they have waxy leaves. The largest amount of mangrove coverage is found in Indonesia, where 14,000 square miles of land is covered by trees. That's more than twice the size of Jamaica and roughly the size of Vermont. Not only are they good at protection, protecting coastlines, though, which is increasingly important in the face of rising sea levels, but they do a great job at sequestering carbon. Uh, a worldwide movement to plant more mangroves in now on the way as scientists uh, understanding of uh, their benefits deepens worldwide man mangroves and are believed to reduce risk to more than 50, 15 million people and prevent more than 65 million billion dollars in property damages each year, while they could save $50 billion in annual damages to the U.S. economy. Mangroves are often, often underappreciated, with most people not realizing their true value to the overall hills of our communities and our entire planet say Todd Hardin, COO of Plastic Oceans International. Uh, if you um, uh, sea grass is incredibly important for feeding marine mammals, cleaning surrounding water and helping remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Restoring sea grass uh, meadows in the world's oceans has become a priority for conservation since the 1990s. When once flourishing meadows began exper exper 
experiencing a shocking decline. It was around this time uh, that scientists observed pits poke markets across the sandy bottoms of sea grass. Meadows where hungry sea otters had be, been digging for clams. This moonscape left in the otterns may consist of a series of craters of dislodged region vegetation. While at first glance it looked like sea otters were tearing up their own environment, uh, scientists observed that the seagrass seemed to be much healthier in areas with high otter populations, leading them to wonder. Could this road treatment of seagrass be doing the plants for a favor? It turns out they were right. Otters seemingly destructive habit is actually beneficial to seagrass reproduction. In areas revenged by snacking sea otters, the seagrass is more genetically diverse and resilient than in areas without otter populations. A team of researchers set out to determine the benefits of sea otter <coughs> disturbance on marine vegetation in a paper published in Science. <coughs> Scientists uh, found the sea otter stimulate uh, sexual reproduction among ilgoras at the dig for calms. Eel grass can reproduce in two days in two ways asexually by cloning itself or sexually by producing produ producing flowers that get pollinated and produce seeds. Sea otter digging increased genetic diversity in the eel grass by up to 30% by increasing opportunities for eel grass seedings to sprout and grow. Uh, scientists are not the first to discover the benefits of sea otters on eelgrass. Nation America, Native Americans in the Gulf of California have uh, long harvested uh, seagrass, rhizomes and seeds. They expected better harvests from disturbed meadows. The process of this traditional harvesting by indi indigenous people may have been benefited the seagrass meadows in its own right. This diversity in eelgrass DNA directly, directly translates to a greater ability to thrive in toad conditions and threatened environments. A skill that's incredibly important in a climate constantly changing and being impacted by global warming. These findings highlight uh, the importance of predators, like the sea otter, how <clears throat> on their ecosystems. Otter's feeding uh, behavior can have a positive minor effect throughout the environment. The study is a major advance, says marine actual ecologist Boris Worm, uh, showing that uh, large animals may help to acti <coughs> actively maintain the quality and resilience of their habitat. Oceans are already on their large species, especially whales, to recycle and regenerate ecosystems. Studies and Stanford University identified the whale as an animal that rechanges its own food sources and recycles carbon. Okay, guys, that's it for today. 
uh, wish you a good day and goodbye.